السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته First of all, أهلاً وسهلاً Welcome to our young guests It's a pleasure to have you here May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, illuminate your minds and your hearts and may we be blessed by your presence Bismillah, الذي لا إله سواه الواحد الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه أبدا صرمدا حمدا يليق بجماله وجلاله حمدا يليق بكماله في جماله وجلاله حمدا يليق بجزيل عطائه ونعمائه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف أنبيائه سيدنا ومولانا محمد الصادق الأمين الطاهر التقي النقي الرسول المبين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله الطاهرين الطيبين وأصحابه الغر الميامين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم آمين We continue inshallah تعالى in the context of the tazkiyah of the nafs the envelope in which we are to put everything we learn the envelope of we are to put everything we experience and we were speaking last in that context of the tazkiyah of the nufus we were addressing one of the most fundamental and necessary elements of the tazkiyah of the nufus namely dhikrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala كيف أصبحتم أصبحنا وأصبح الملك لله والحمد لله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير رب أسألك خير ما في هذا النهار وخير ما بعده رب أعوذ بك من شر ما في هذا النهار ومن شر ما بعده رب أعوذ بك من الكسل وسوء الكبر رب أعوذ بك من عذاب في النار ومن عذاب في القبر آمين الله مفتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك يا الله please open the hearing channels of our hearts to your ذكر to that which reminds us of you اللهم ارزق أنفسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها يا الله please grant our souls ourselves the degree required for their own consciousness of you and cleanse us and purge our hearts our minds ourselves our souls from that which is not consistent with your exalted names and attributes. For you are the only one who is most able to grant us that cleanliness, that purity. Nothing, no one reaches you without you. Allahumma la takilna ila anfusina tarfatain. Ya Allah, please do not entrust us to our own selves, not even for a moment as brief as the twinkling of the eye. And let us continue in that which is about never forgetting Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our lives are meant to be always, constantly, nay, necessarily, necessarily connected, integrated, connected, dependent upon Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the source of our life, 
the source of all love, the source of the ultimate loving mercy, ar rahma Any moment we spend disconnected from that by our own choices, that's a miserable moment. The most difficult moment for a true heart is a moment spent in absence, in absence of awareness of him as Zawjil. A moment spent away somewhere else in our minds and in our, in our emotions, away from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, by the way, one of the beautiful meanings of a dua, a sort of a munajah, that one of the righteous, one of the righteous women of the early periods had mentioned in her munajah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in contradistinction to that, that the most delightful and the sweetest of moments in one's life is a moment spent in awareness of you, in dhikr of you, with the heart and the mind and the soul. Those are the most liberating and the sweetest and the most beautiful of moments. A moment with you, Ya Allah. That's why in such munajat, some of them would say, Jannah without you is worthless. Jannah without you, Ya Allah, without being with you, without being near to you, is not worth it. The worth of Jannah, Jannah is to be what it is to be because the mu'min will encounter you, will experience you in the most intimate possible of ways in Jannah. And therefore, the worth of Jannah is by your presence, Ya Allah. And so, what about a life outside of Jannah in this world without you? That's misery. That's the first hell, Jahannam, before the real one. The first Jahannam is for those human beings, Ya Latif, may we be protected those who in their lives in this world and not in Jannah, in this world are distant by choice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep away from the source of all peace, the source of all happiness, the source of all freedom, and the source of all quenching spiritual waters. We continue, my dear sisters and brothers, in this realm of the importance of dhikr of Allah Azza wa as we are also practicing that. As we are also practicing that through salah, through dua, through dhikr, here in the masjid and outside of the masjid, to always constantly remain aware and la nansa, and la nansa rabbana that I and you do not forget him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I must not, I must learn at least and strive to learn to be in a condition where not even for a blink of an eye of a moment, I am not remembering him, I forgot him. Haqqullahi ala ibadihi an yudkhilahumul jannah Haqqullahi ala ibadihi li yudkhilahumul jannah and yadhkuruhu fala yansawah. As we have learned, as Rasulullah taught us that the right of the divine upon his servants to enter them, Jannah, is that they are always in dhikr of him and never forget him. And tadhkur Allah fala tansah. God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will grant us his ultimate company, Allahu Akbar, the company of the divine. Al-ma'iyyatu ma'allahi azza wa jal. Eternally. In exchange for what? For something very, very, very finite. Because it's not about benefiting him. Like we trade in this world, I give you, you give me, and what I give you is commensurate, proportional to what you give me. 
because I need and you need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need anything. But out of his rahmah, you give the finite of you, he gives you that which is practically, practically speaking, infinite. And what is it? That we are in dhikr of him, we remember him, we do not forget him. We remember him not only through our tongues, bi dhikrihi azza wa jal, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar, la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-aliyya al-azim. Being aware of the full meanings carried by those words, inside of me, mentally and emotionally. But that is intended to lead me to the other practical step, that in every heart beat of my life, every second of my life, no matter what I do, no matter what I say, no matter where I am, no matter when I am, I act, I behave, in ways consistent with my awareness of him, with my dhikr of him as the witcher. That I change as a person, that I as a person become better, that my khuluq, as we have learned, and we continue to learn that my khuluq, my inner image, my character, changes and improves, that my heart moves forward. For I am in dhikr of him to modify and to rectify my akhlaq. Through that, through that awareness of him, azzawajal. Bi dhikrihi, azzawajal. Bi tadhakkurihi wa bi dhikrihi uslihu. من أحوالي أصلح من أخلاقي لأنني كلما تذكرته سبحانه وتعالى وعيت أسماءه وصفاته لم يكن بد إلا أن أتصرف بما يرضيه عز وجل If I am aware of him سبحانه وتعالى If I am in that ذكر of him سبحانه وتعالى in that awareness of him سبحانه وتعالى it is natural and consistent and imperative that I modify and change my behavior consistent with, a, with what I am aware of. But when we forget him, Azzawajal, because we're not in the dhikr of him, Azzawajal, because la natadhakkar, we do not make ourselves remember, then we don't have a background, if you will, in which we operate to compare. So our khuluq might be arbitrary. Worst, shaytani. Dhikrullah <coughs> azza wa jal. Dhikrullah azza wa jal is for that. Yes, it has value in itself. It has value in itself. The fact that I am in dhikr of him with my tongue has value in itself. As a Muslim, as a mu'min, as a muwahid, as a murid, the fact that I am in dhikr of him azza wa jal, even by my tongue only, is valuable. It has value in itself, but it has an end, it has an objective, it has a fruit, it has a consequence. There is an aim behind that, and that is to change my qalb, to liberate my qalb, to adorn and embellish my qalb with the beautiful attributes. And the means of the most essential means, to the extent 
that if I am not in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, I am not in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, if I am not in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, I am exposed to evil akhlaq. I am exposed to evil akhlaq. First of all, because I do not have the background of the divine attributes to look at, to change. When I'm in dhikr, I bring that background to look at, to change. Do you understand what I mean? In addition to that, يقول مولانا سبحانه وتعالى عز وجل describing those who are not in dhikr of Allah عز وجل and becomes a pattern like a munafiq or a mushrik or a kafir says Allah عز وجل استحوذ عليهم الشيطان فأنساهم ذكر الله استحوذ عليهم الشيطان فأنساهم ذكر الله what is استحوذ to take over to surround to defeat to overwhelm to entrap استحوذ عليهم الشيطان that is shaytan now overwhelm them contained them they are contained within the sovereignty the ability the control the power of now what shaytan when that occurs fa fa ansahum dhikrullah fa here means consequently consequently therefore he made them forget the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is very telling of an ayah because it is telling us what is it telling us? What do you conclude from it practically? The more we are awake, the more we get far. The more we forget. Yes. But استحوذ عليهم الشيطان فأنساهم ذكر الله was the logical conclusion. Yes, that's more of an inference, logical inference, more directly than that. That's an inference, more directly than that. There is no in between this side or that side. That's even. استحوذ فأنسى استحوذ فأنسى استحوذ فأنساهم What is it saying? That's exactly the direct inference نعم That is when I am not in ذكر of Allah عز وجل That means shaytan is in control which means the more shaitan is in control, the less I am in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Istahwada fa'ansa. Why? Because this is a causative statement. It's a causative statement. Which says, I forget because shaitan took over. And therefore, now, the more direct inference, if and when we're not in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, that's a sign that shaitan is in control. At some level, for the kafir and the mushrik and the munafiq, it's one level. And for a person who is neither a munafiq, nor a mushrik, nor a kafir, well, alhamdulillah, a Muslim, for example, there is still a level of not being in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, of some level. And the more I have of those levels of less dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, the more it is indicative that what is more in control under those circumstances is shaitan. Istahwada alayhimu shaytanu fa'ansahum dhikr Allah. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan. And that means, since it is that, that means about akhlaq, which and who and what do I have in my background when I'm not in dhikr? Shaitan and shaitan's attributes. And shaitan's attributes. And thus, when I'm not in dhikr of Allah Azzawajal, the less I'm in dhikr of Allah Azzawajal, the more I am susceptible to developing shaytani characteristics of kibr, arrogance, of ghurur, delusion, of greed, and miserliness, bukhl, and shuh, of lack of rahmah, lack of mercy and merciful love, lack of compassion, hasad, the more I am likely to be expressing feelings of hasad, violent envy, violent envy inside these shaitani characteristics. That's why we have learned and what we have learned is consistent with everything we're saying Quranically and from the Sunnah of Sayyidina Mawlana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam the words of our saintly scholars Rahimahumullah Ta'ala the words of our the Al-Ulama Al-Awliya all of that is consistent with all of this when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave that parable that example of the person who is running away from a hostile pursuers until he enters into a fort, a fortification, and closes the gates and the walls are too high to be climbed or penetrated and is safe from the pursuers. He وسلم, said that that pursuer is whom? Shaytan, the pursued is whom? The mu'min, you and I, and the fortification is what? Dhikrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never must I, and I repeat and I'll continue to repeat that by the theorem of repetition. Continue to repeat that. I must not desist, let alone give up in dhikr of Allah Azza wa whether it rains or it shines, whether in prosperity or in adversity. لا أفتر عن ذكر الله اللهم لا تحرمنا ذكرك اللهم لا تحرمنا ذكرك يا الله, please do not deprive us of your dhikr And as we strive to continue to be in dhikr of him subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhikr will become a joy, a delight. We would not be able to live with it internally, emotionally, just like a fish is unable to live outside the water. We will feel that until our hearts if not, our tongues continue to be in that awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. And for dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, there is no limit. There is no limit in time and in space and in circumstances. Many ibadat have Limits and exceptions. Even salah. We cannot, it is haram to perform salah in certain times. Isn't it? It is haram to perform siyam at certain times. Isn't it? It is haram to perform hajj at certain time. Isn't it? 
etc. But it is always, always beautiful and recommended, not only halal, mustahab at least, to be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. The dhikr has no limitation. <coughs> to the extent it is so much so that yawm, yawm al qiyamah that yawm al qiyamah inshallah when we are resurrected and we enter jannah ameen dhikr does not stop the text teaches by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam dhikr does not stop we would be inspired naturally to be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal as we on earth are naturally made to breathe. You have no control of your breathing. Allah made you breathe that way. You breathe. You breathe to, to live. Your heart beats despite you. You have no control of that. It's natural. Natural. Dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal in Jannah would be something like this. As Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kama yulhamuna an nafas. Yulhamuna dhikr, kama yulhamuna an nafas. That dwellers of Jannah would be inspired to be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal naturally as we are naturally made to breathe in this world. Remember the munafiq? The munafiq, as we spoke about, is in some dhikr. Of course, from a heart that is treacherous, from a heart that is a kafir. But the munafiq says, I am Muslim. But his or her heart is not. And Allah tells us, munafiqs practice dhikr, but as we know, rarely. لا يذكرون الله إلا قليلا That's the characteristic of a munafiq. لا يذكرون الله إلا قليلا Look, their inconsistency of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, in this case, it's not only about their inconsistency, it's about the fact that they really are not in dhikr at all, because their hearts deny that. Right? And because their hearts deny dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, even though they are in dhikr with their tongues, occasionally, but their hearts Deny that, deny that, I underline the word, deny that. Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell us about their akhlaq. And you see the consistency between dhikr and akhlaq or the absence of dhikr and the deficiency of akhlaq. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ayatul munafiqi thalath. Iza haddatha kadhib. Wa iza ahada أو وعد أخلف وإذا أؤتمن خان وهي said also وإذا خاصم فجر the signs of a munafiq a hypocrite in the sense of munafiq are three or four and he mentions all of those that he mentions such as when he or she speaks he or she lies a munafiq Munafiq lies, lies in speech, in storytelling, in reporting, in reporting, in analyzing texts, in developing syntheses from texts, in agreement, in disagreement, promises and does not deliver the promise. وَإِذَا عَاهَدَ أخلف وإذا وعد أخلف وإذا عاهد غدر of the characteristic of a munafiq when he or she makes a promise they violate their promises they don't deliver the promise whatever that promise is something little 
or something major. Whether it is in family life at home, or in work life at work, or in school life in school, or in a game, these characteristics show. And when the munafiq disagrees, وَإِذَا خَاصَ مَا فَجَرْ When there is a disagreement, a dispute in any matter, the characteristic of a munafiq that identifies him or her is that they are, in their dispute, they are explosive, abusive. They use abusive language. They are explosive, they are angry and loud and shout. And the way they argue is abusive, impolite, rude, ruthless. وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ Fajr goes beyond the limits. The point is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in this hadith, he's telling us about the akhlaq of a munafiq. And every time I or you exhibit or show any such a khuluq, then what does that mean? That I have become a munafiq? Inshallah not. But what it means, what? That I have an attribute now like that of a munafiq, ya latif. And that's already too ugly to want to bear. The point is, look how Rasulullah related nifaq to ugly akhlaq. But nifaq is characterized with what, as we said? With lack of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Do you see the consistency now? Lack of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal is the way to su'ul akhlaq. Tarku dhikr Allah Azza wa Jal is the way to su'ul akhlaq. Kan al insanu man kan. No matter who one is. And I know what I mean by my words. No matter who one is or what one is. Lack of akhlaq, I'm sorry, lack of dhikr, lack of akhlaq. There are those who lack dhikr. They will lack the most essential akhlaq. And if one is learned or kada, has some dhikr to the extent he or she does not perform dhikr to his or her potential, he or she will lack of akhlaq to his or her potential. With whom this correspondence? Ala qadri ahli al-azmi ta'ati al-azaim وتأتي على قدر الكرام المكارم and that's proportions proportions you have a seed your seed has program that is different than another seed this has a potential this has a different potential The way you are going to irrigate the seed, this one or this one, will produce what's in the potential. For someone depriving the seed from water will be deprived from a lot of potential that is in the seed. Someone depriving this other seed from water will deprive that seed from, let's say, Less potential, but it is its potential. You understand? That's why I say, no matter who one is,
not being in dhikr of Allah Azza wa will produce the results consistent with the potential in each one. Allah Ta'ala Alam. How can we forget him as a How can we forget him as a When I say la adhkur, when I say la adhkurullah, subhanallah, when I say the statement la adhkurullah, what does that mean? Ponder that. Ta'amal fi had al kalam. La adhkurullah. Means what? I do not remember Allah. I do not remember Allah. لا أذكر الله. In the in the lesser dimension, لا أذكر الله. I am not in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And in your mind, when you say these things, what is there is not that awareness of the value and the danger of that statement as when you say لا أذكر الله بمعنى I forget him. I do not remember him. La adhkurullah. Versus, I do not remember him. Do you see the difference? La adhkur. La adhkur. We take it very lightly. Versus the statement, I do not remember Allah. So when we say la adhkur, it's not the first one, it's the second one. La adhkur, I don't remember. How can I not remember the source of all existence? How can I not remember the source of all istimrarul wujud? Not only the source of wujud, but the source of istimrarul wujud. The source of continuity of existence. Not only the source of existence, nothingness, then existence, but the continuity of existence, the source of it, i.e., my continuity, your continuity, the continuity of the resources around me. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. في الإيجاد وفي الإمداد هو سبحانه وتعالى هو سبحانه وتعالى الأصل والينبوع والضروري سبحانه وتعالى في الإيجاد والإمداد both in existence and in subsistence and in continuity how can I forget the source of my life. In the creation of Allah, there is so much to remind us of this relationship. When we are born, we are born as children, as babies. And everybody has seen babies, and we were babies, so the way we see is the way we were, so we think of what we were. How a baby is so helpless. Cannot. The baby is programmed not to forget the mother. You do not forget the mother when you're a baby. You're in dhikr of your mother. You're in dhikr of your mother naturally. You, you don't make it. Allah created it in you. For if you don't, you will die. If he made it like a taklif early on to remember your mother at that age with that immaturity no baby almost will survive so you are in dhikr of your mother naturally because it is the source of your survival and subsistent ila ajali musamma up to a certain time as I observe that, it should remind me, subhanAllah, look at that baby. And I, relative to the divine, I am helpless. Everything there is, 
everything there is, everything I need is with him as a widget in his control. Now, as I'm an adult, it's simply in a more sophisticated way I look at that. How can I forget him? كيف أنسى ربي? And if I forget him, I forget myself. I forget everything that is going to be necessary and needed and important for myself, just like that child. If the child were to be made to forget his father, he will not survive. He will forget his own self, the survival of his own self. As Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, what did, has he, does he say in this context? Nasullaha fa'ansahum anfusahum. Nasullaha fa'ansahum anfusahum. They forgot Allah. Allah made them forget their own selves. Do you see how it relates to what we said? Nasullaha fa'ansahum anfusahum. And therefore, one will not be mindful and conscious and careful about that which is important for his or her own noble, honorable living and surviving. Do you understand? If I forget Allah, the person who forgets the divine will forget that which is necessary for his survival and living as a noble human being. So that person will not be so mindful, so aware of the moral imperatives, the spiritual imperatives for the spiritual living and the spiritual survival, the quality living. A person who severs his or her relationship with the divine through deliberate forgetting, not the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, that person will not be equipped with the means for true happiness in this dunya and in akhirah. And will argue in ways that are very obfuscated, very entangled, very improper, will argue in terms of uh, enforcing the immoral and detaching from the moral will argue in very improper ways to um, reject truth and to embrace falsehood. And sahullahu nafsa. So that person would be unable to gauge and to measure and to evaluate properly what truly benefits him or her. And sahullahu nafsa bi nisyanihi. رَبِّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بِإِنْسَانِهِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى That's what we risk وَلْعِيَاذْ بِاللَّهِ We break that umbilical cord. We cut that umbilical cord. We are these embryos in this universe. And we cut the umbilical cord to Allah Azza wa Jal. And that umbilical cord is what? Dua and dhikr of Allah Azza wa We sever that, and then the, the cord of life that sustains us is broken, and we're left without it. And that's what shaitan helps and strives that human beings will do, to sever the relationship with Allah Azza wa so that they live miserably by choice, but not aware necessarily of their misery. I think we did uh, review last time that Rasulullah taught us that a home without the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal we, we spoke about that. A home without dhikr of Allah Azza wa is like dead. And a home with dhikr of Allah Azza wa is living. 
in our own homes. مثل البيت الذي يذكر فيه الله والبيت الذي لا يذكر فيه الله مثل الحي والميت الله أكبر مثل البيت الذي يذكر فيه الله والبيت الذي لا يذكر فيه الله مثل الحي والميت a household filled with furniture filled with attractive things even if all halal but empty from dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal a house in which there is no dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal that external material adornment doesn't make it beautiful at all in reality if we put like this uh, spiritual scopes then we'll see monsters inside the house we'll see ugliness inside the house without the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal we see shayateen inside the house, sitting on that furniture, laying down in those beds, uh, being hanged in those posters. You can, if you put that spiritual gogol. And he also says, Allah said, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ he even said, he وسلم, the example of a person who is in dhikr of his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and a person who is not in dhikr of his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is the example of the living and the dead. Every time I am not in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, deliberately, especially, or out of neglect, then that heart is dead. It's beating physically, but motionless spiritually. It's not moving anywhere. مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ Said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam مَا جَلَسَ قَوْمٌ مَجْلِسًا لَمْ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِيهِ وَلَمْ يُصَلُّوا عَلَى نَبِيِّهِمْ إِلَّا كَانَ عَلَيْهِمْ تِرَهْ فَإِنْ شَاءَ عَذَّبَهُمْ وَإِنْ شَاءَ غَفَرَ لَهُمْ سَدْهِ صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما جلس قوم مجلسا وما قعد قوم مجلسا وما جلس قوم مجلسا لم يذكر الله فيه ولم يصلوا على نبيهم Every time a group of people Muslims come together together for anything for a wedding for a for a, you know, for a walima, uh, for a talk, for just getting together, for ilm, whatever, whatever a meeting is, a meeting of work in which they did not perform dhikr of Allah Azza wa in which they were not in dhikr of Allah Azza wa nor did they send peace and blessings upon their Nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa That majlis said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is tira. Kana alayhim tira. Kana alayhim tira. It is like the value of that majlis is suspended. It is up to Allah to forgive them or to punish them. Subhanallah. It is up to Allah to forgive them or to punish them because they left that majlis and they did not perform any dhikr of Allah Azza wa and no salah al nabi Sometimes some Muslims, we meet for matters of masajid, matters of communities and they don't even start with Bismillah. ولا صلاة على النبي ولا سبحان ولا at the end كفارة المجلس and this is all supposed to be about promoting Islamic values that could be the case the worth of that majlis is تيرة إن شاء الله عذبهم وإن شاء غفر لهم لماذا why 
لأنهم خرجوا من ذلك المجلس ولم يذكروا الله ولم يصلوا على نبيه صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم And remember the other text if I did not mention it I'm going to mention it also now ما من قوم يقومون من مجلس لا يذكرون الله فيه إلا قاموا عن مثل جيفة حمار Please remember that text is very strong text ما من قوم يقومون من مجلس لا يذكرون الله فيه whenever a group of people had a meeting together for some reason and then they finish the meeting and leave the meeting again without the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal then he says Allah Alaihi Wasallam قاموا على مثل جيفة حمار قاموا على مثل جيفة حمار literally it says and then when they left they stood up to leave they would stand up upon the like of the corpse of a stinking dead donkey in other words what that majlis in which they discussed whatever they discussed they reached whatever conclusion they reached the haqiqa the haqiqa of the value of that majlis is like jifa to himar the worth of that majlis in its haqiqa is like the corpse the stinking corpse of a dead donkey ya latif that's what it is worth spiritually stinking dead valueless ma allah azza wa jal valueless ma allah azza wa jal and that means on the day of judgment that meeting when the persons like that would be expecting their deeds to be rewarded in every action that they did are they going to be rewarded those people like that on the day of judgment Allah ta'ala ala, in the deeds in the records of their deeds remember that majlis this is the reward for it this is the worth of it why lam yuzkar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi dhalik al-majlis lam yuzkar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala في ذلك المجلس my dear sisters and brothers <coughs> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be of those who listen to the words of admonition and follow the best of them we take our short recess here inshallah ta'ala and we resume in about seven minutes subhanakallahumma bihamdika shanu la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu